Hello, I'm Grant. Welcome to Second Plate, a cooking show that's all about reusing ingredients and finding recipes that are just easy to make with what you have around. Tonight we're going to be making a seared chicken quarter. It's basically just the leg and the thigh. We're going to sear it and then we're also going to be making a pan sauce to let it kind of reduce around into. And it kind of comes together really nicely. It uses a bunch of cool little things that I think are neat tricks to actually have in your kitchen. And it gives it a certain sense of flair because you can incorporate stuff like white wine into the sauce or you can just make it as you go and just taste test it until it's exactly what you want. So let's get cooking. So here I have a pan on high. This is can either be done in one pan or one pan and then transfer to a oven. What we're going to be doing is we want the skin of the chicken to be really crisp. So the idea is we're going to sear it because otherwise it will soften up when we cook it inside the sauce. So that's kind of the idea behind this. So I just have a chicken quarter here. Again, this is just the essentially the leg and the thigh together. I actually found that this is not necessarily the most ideal thing for a sauce because this is bone in. But I really like the idea of getting like a chicken quarter. It's something where if you're not going to go for a chicken breast, it's still a little bit more meat, but it's still one cohesive thing. And just the idea that this is a cut you can buy, I think is what's the most interesting. So for some flavor on our sauce, basically to build up all the uh, juiciness, I actually have some bacon, which I'm just going to take and cut up like so. I'll admit I am not the best cooker of bacon. Ideally, you could uh, cook this entirely separately and then just crumple it up, but I'm going to go just chop it up into these pieces here. This is going to be the start of our sauce. What's going to happen is, as I cook this bacon, it's obviously going to give off some fat, as well as just those little like darkened bits. But when we actually apply the uh, stock, that's going to give us it's going to like come off the pan and it's going to come together. Cool. So I'm just going to move this around. Essentially, I'm going to leave this chicken as is until it gets a nice sear, and then I'm going to flip it around on the other side. I did put it skin side down because that's the part we really want to have seared, but we'll do the other side as well. And then our goal is to not let it get soggy and can stay nice and crisp. So I'm going to go ahead and prep the rest of our ingredients here. One thing I wanted to make a point about, because I've been wanting to talk about this on the show, is I, I use a lot of garlic. And it's this thing where, just with how garlic works, it's, it seems like it's just built to be obnoxious. And I actually thought, like, oh, I'll get this garlic press, and that will eliminate some of my issues. It kind of did. It definitely made it slicing it a lot easier. But I still had this issue of actually getting the uh, like skin off of this. And it was like, there's no good way where it's like, sometimes if it's large enough, you can hit it with a knife. Other times, I would just like cut it in and peel it off. And I always had this debate where it's like, I saw a garlic roller. That's what this is. And I'm like, there's no way that this could like solve that problem. And like, do I really need to actually buy a second device purely for garlic? But my uh, garlic press actually broke, shot a rivet out into my tomato soup I was cooking. So I bought a new press, and it came with one. I was like, oh, let me try this out. And I was actually amazed at how good it is about like, just getting that skin off. And it's just become a completely non-issue. You can do multiple ones at once. It just kind of like just chomps through it. So that was bad. And I'm just surprised. Like, it's something I could never really justify getting like just to try out, but now that I, I guess, have seen how effective it is, it's just like, oh, this is just absolutely amazing. So let's go ahead and finish rolling some of these out. It's just something I've been going back and forth because I, I know I like garlic in my dishes, but it's just like a pain. And I always have this debate, like, should I just like pre-chop and dice like several bulbs at once and then just store it in my fridge? Should I just buy it pre-minced? Does that ruin the point? So any way thing to make it easier has been extremely helpful. We 
is collect this. I'm gonna go ahead and mince our garlic then. While I definitely like this press, I will say that I've yet to find a good garlic press that is not a pain to actually clean. But maybe one day I'll figure out all these kitchen gadgets that will make my life easier. Because it still beats actually chopping up finely dicing garlic. Okay. Got that. And go ahead and come and actually check the chicken. That's plenty. So we're basically looking for some nice golden brown. It doesn't have to be perfect because ultimately we're there's no easy way to sear some of the more rounded parts of this chicken. Just gonna keep moving those around. And again, like what I'm actually looking for is like these black markings that are gonna be coming off of the bacon, especially as they get more and more done. Because that's gonna be released when we put the stock on, and that's kind of where the uh, juiciness is gonna come from in our sauce. Okay. Next, I'm gonna chop up an onion. I just like using a lot of onions and it helps kind of fill out the sauce. I'm gonna put those in first because they take the longest time to actually cook down. I always go back and forth with this internal debate about should I buy large onions or not? Because on one hand, it's good value and I, if I'm gonna chop it, I might as well just chop it all. On the other hand, this is how I get committed to having too much onion in some of my recipes because I have a large amount of onions. I can actually take off that next one. So the main thing I want to call out is also just putting in again the onions a little bit early because they take longer. And it's really tempting, I know, to put all of them in at once, particularly the garlic and the onions, because they just kind of like feel a little bit similar. However, that pretty much guarantees the garlic's gonna be burnt and the onions are gonna be undercooked. It's a very satisfying sound. If you have a really nice knife, you can actually go one more step further where you slice it horizontally and then it just very satisfyingly comes apart, but my knives at home are not that good, so I never actually practice that. Okay, good. Transfer these to a bowl. I have to say, I really do like onions as a whole. Like, I'm not gonna eat a whole onion, but I feel like they're in the same vein for me as spinach, where it's just kind of like, you can kind of just like add them to anything, you know? Whether the flavor or not needs it is a different debate, but it just like kind of helps fill it out because really you have to eat so much onion for it to like, like calorically matter that it's like, oh, why not? And I feel the same with spinach where it's like, if I can just hide spinach in recipes, it's very convenient and really helps them just go a little bit farther each time. So just gonna stir these. At this point, our chicken should be getting kind of done. We're actually gonna be pulling that out here in a second. So I'm gonna separate these onions. Because the sauce itself is going to take a fair bit of like stirring and mashing and cooking down. And if we leave the chicken in there, it's going to just, more than anything, just make it really inconvenient to do that. But we'll then be adding it back in. So I'm just gonna let these kind of cook down and keep checking our chicken. So it looks like it needs some more time on there. Actually, I'm gonna back up the corner, see if I can get a sear, kind of just on the edges of this chicken. These are actually, were already seasoned, like when I bought them, so I was found it convenient just to kind of leave that as is, but it's chicken. It's, I would leave it up to you for what you season it with, salt, pepper, garlic, what have you. 
But we can go ahead and go through the rest of this recipe. So I have some tomatoes here. These are actually already peeled. These are, I forget the specific kinds, but uh, these tomatoes are really good for making sauces. And it's just convenient that they're already like skinless because that lets us mash them really easy. And I have noticed that when using this with like just normal like on the vine tomatoes, you have to really cook down the uh, tomatoes. Otherwise the actual wall, like the cell skin of the tomato will essentially not break down as fast as the rest of it. And you'll end up with just tomato skins in your sauce. And it's not bad, like it tastes fine, it's still tomato, but it is something to kind of like make sure you leave time for. Because otherwise your sauce is probably gonna be a little bit chunkier than you want. And keep that. But basically, once the onions start getting a little more like translucent, then we're gonna add in these tomatoes, especially once we remove the chicken. And then we're going to let those cook down, spread them around. I'm gonna mash them if there's any large chunks. Then we're gonna add in some stock. Basically, it's gonna make a little bit of a soup here. And we're going to keep our chicken in that while it cooks, but trying to make a point to actually not fully cover it. That way you get some of the flavor of the chicken in the sauce, but then the sauce itself is not going to overly soften the chicken. And I wanna point that out now is because it is something to take into consideration the size of your pan. Like if you have a really wide pan, that's kind of is gonna determine how much sauce you have to make versus if you were to do a really tall one, you might get away with like making less. And it's just something where if you know, oh, I wanna cover up half of the chicken and you start cooking it, you can be like, oh, I, for this to work, I have to make a lot of sauce, which it's just something to kind of think about when you're portioning stuff out. Like generally you would get like two um, chicken quarters because chicken has two. So it works out really convenient where like in a pan like this, I'd essentially put one chicken here, one chicken there, and then you can kind of work a corner to cover it up. Looking good. Looks like our, some of our onions are getting pretty done there. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some tomatoes. Try not to splash too much before they kind of slosh out. But I actually really recommend these for making sauces because it just cuts out a lot of the uh, middleman of like having to work the tomatoes. And it's just like, it, this, it's exactly what buying tomatoes like this is for. If you grow your own tomatoes, I would say go for it. But in general, like store-bought potato tomatoes for flavor are just like, I don't hate them, but also like they don't necessarily do that much for me. So just up to your own personal preference on that. Okay, I'm gonna stir this up and let them kind of cook down. They're gonna take a little while to start breaking apart since I just dumped basically cold tomatoes on this hot plate. You can hear even the chickens sizzling less as it heats back up. It's actually something I found really convenient because of that, because you keep like adding, removing, re-adding things that have cooled down. At home, I had made this in a cast iron skillet, maybe a pretty large one. And then it had the added benefit in that I could just put that straight into the oven to let this kind of reduce, because you can make it entirely on the stove top. It just needs to <laughs> splash away. It just needs to take longer for the chicken itself to fully cook through, but it's perfectly fine. But I prefer to put it in the oven because like, that's where I have the most experience like cooking chicken. I know about like how long it's gonna take, signs to look for, stuff like that. Plus any recipe that lets me basically walk away from it is honestly pretty convenient. I really like something where I can just like, okay, cool, that's cooking over there. I can leave it and it doesn't need babysitting. Take a look at these. It's, it's definitely getting there. Make sure I eat. This is actually one thing that's kind of convenient is if you have two burners, normally I would steer this on really high. I'm gonna, so I'm gonna leave this actually on the other side. But if it's more convenient for you to put it all in one pan, feel free. Just gonna keep stirring that tomato. Try and keep 
you can tell it's actually kind of breaking apart because of how it just continues expanding. I'm going to go ahead and just drop my garlic in while we wait, mix that up here. Pan sauces are something that I've just recently started exploring because they seem convenient. They seem like they add a certain amount of purpose to a dish, like, oh, you must have really planned out all the stuff that's going to go into that if you even planned out a specific sauce. Like, before I really was doing the cooking show, I didn't ever think to like make that. It's like if I had a sauce, I would just get sauce. I wouldn't necessarily make some kind of custom one. Like if I'm making, I don't know, it's like spaghetti, it would just be its own simple thing. It wouldn't be this really involved thing where I'm letting it simmer with, like with the meat. But it's really convenient. Although I'm still very like, I don't know, like sensitive about it because I know there's a lot of times I'll make sauces, particularly ones without tomatoes, like basically just like a brown sauce which is why I kind of wanted to add tomatoes to this, where it always turns out okay and it tastes good, but like in the interim steps of you're just like making it, <laughs> part of me is always like, am I just making like really weird gravy with extra steps? Because it like, basically like these ba bacon like bits I'm gonna kind of create, they can kind of look less than appetizing when they're cooking. But as we add more and more to this, it usually just comes out perfectly fine. One thing I do want to point out is not only like the flavor of the chicken and the sauce, but also the color, because like that's something that when you're making the sauce is something you might not think to do. But like for example, I kind of want to go for a tomato soup style look, particularly after all this done, we're gonna actually be adding some milk. It should give it a a, a nice orange look, but it is something that I like to worry about a lot. Like actually, one thing I intended to have this sauce was cilantro because cilantro is just interesting to me and just having like, for a very red sauce, just having a different color, it's really nice, but unfortunately my uh, cilantro went bad. I was trying to do this experiment where it's like, oh, I bought all the cilantro, what if I just chop it all now because it's kind of a pain to keep chopping small bits. Well, that apparently greatly accelerated its spoil rate, and I just like looked at it on the way over here. It's like, ooh, that's that's not ideal. <laughs> cool. I'm gonna add some pepper. Some of this stuff you can add really at any time. It's just kind of like doling it out, stuff like that. Wait, we're waiting for the chicken, anyway. Oh, that's definitely looking. Better I'm gonna cook. And this is not meant to be like done yet because again, we're going to be removing it from the heat, finishing our sauce and cooking it all together. But really I'm just trying to get a nice sear. I actually turn this up even higher. See if I can get like a darker peel there. Now I'll just have to keep stirring my sauce. Really I can't cook this sauce for too long because really every time I've made this dish, you're essentially kind of waiting for it to reduce anyway. So if I just keep letting the uh, sauce sit, that's perfectly fine. I am, however, going to toss some cornstarch in. Well, that's, yeah. And this is just to thicken it. This is just something I'm paranoid about where like adding cornstarch has bit me in the past because it is very anti-liquid. So you can very easily like miss a clump that needs to be broken apart because it won't like just split apart when it gets in contact with the water. So the point being is I like to like sneak it in at different steps so I don't have all of it at once because that just makes it a lot easier to say miss a clump. And basically what I just do is I go around and I just kind of like smush it down. But you can see how some of these here, like how that cornstarch, it's just not gonna break apart with a liquid. So you have to go make a point to do that. But we want a thick sauce and I assume most people don't want to wait <laughs> eight hours for an amazing reduction. There. That's 
looking good. So, I'm gonna let that cook under there. Then we're gonna pull it out and start making the rest of our sauce. I'm gonna keep tossing this in. I actually really like cornstarch. You can also use flour, and I think flour is, it's just as good. Like, technically, the cornstarch is like physically better at thickening, but it's really your preference. I like to use cornstarch though, because that's what the only thing I have a use for for cornstarch. Whereas like flour, it's like I don't want to run out. Plus, it's really convenient that I just have a can of it. And literally, when I'm making something like this, I have it in a cabinet above my stove. So I'm just like, I want it to be thicker. Put some more in. Okay, let me go get some more. Versus getting out this giant bag of flour. One thing that certain sauce recipes and just other, doing other stuff for the show has made me wonder is at a certain point, the difference between a sauce and a soup can be a very blurred line. Like this could easily just be tomato soup if we wanted to go that route. But it's like if you like get it nice and thick, that's kind of a dividing factor. Got some salt. Salt's interesting because like it's the kind of thing I buy in large amounts because you can use it for so many things. But like the only real convenient way it feels like to use salt is to like again like just a pinch of salt so you can kind of like mix it around. But then it's always really inconvenient because now I just have like a saucer of salt. <laughs> Which I mean, if you cook all the time for several people, like, or if you cook in like a professional kitchen, I'm sure is perfectly fine because you're using it. But I've yet to find a good solution for that. Maybe if I just do like a Tupperware of salt. Okay, cool. Okay, looking good. I'm going to remove this here, and now we're going to actually get down to it. Cool. Got some simple chicken stock to go with our chicken. Going to use this to kind of just deglaze and just kind of thicken it. Again, this is going to be another like temperature drop, but it's something you just need to look out for. It's not going to be super appetizing, but I'm going to get essentially any of those droppings from earlier with the bacon. I want to spread that out and make sure I essentially have a clean pan. It's actually the whole like process of like deglazing and all that to make sauces or like a roux. The thing that I feel like no one ever mentions that's super convenient is it does, it just cleans your pan because it like releases all the stuck on bits on bottom. Cool, we're gonna go ahead and I think I'm gonna add just a little bit more. So we have somewhere for our chicken to kind of like sit in while it cooks. And we'll reduce down, as well as some more starch, since we added more liquid. And this is just basically a pattern where it's like, I'm trying to get a good consistency as we go. But really, the, I feel like the pretext under it is that you just kind of have to keep iterating and iterating. One thing that's kind of inconvenient about these quarters, I just don't know where to actually grab it. So I'm going to let this kind of submerge, surround it without covering the main top of the chicken, and then I'm going to let the whole thing cook and reduce for about like 20 minutes. After our chicken is good and done, we're going to go take a look at this. I've been just kind of stirring it and getting it to thicken up more and more. You can see how it's kind of retreated to be more of a thick sauce. I do also want to add now stuff for taste. I have just some vinegar. Vinegar is great. But really, like, to be honest, I'll use like anything kind of acidic. Like I mentioned before, like when I made this like essentially for like a date night meal, I actually used white wine. It kind of kind of do like a similar effect. And you don't need to add enough vinegar for you to actually taste vinegar, but just it gives it like a little something. I had always heard the advice that if you 
have a dish and you think it's lacking something, it's probably that you just need something acidic in it. So we're going to go ahead and finish off our sauce, get it exactly how we want, then pull out the chicken. So I'm just going to add a little more until it's the part I desire. You can also let it just cook down longer. When I taste this in there, a little bit more pepper. And some salt. I always feel that I undersalt my dishes because I'm just so afraid of like accidentally messing that up. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and pull our chicken out. If I can get a good handle on. I'm going to plate it. And then we're going to go and finally mix this sauce up. Taste it, and then I'm going to add the milk or cream. You could use butter. It's kind of up to you. I try to go light on like butter and milk and stuff because really, if you like that in your dishes, like you don't need me to tell you that adding more of it's going to help. So it's just kind of a thing where it's like most recipes, like if you're baking or anything, are going to be improved by like sugar. So it's kind of like that with desserts. Like you can always add more. So Really, if you want like a really creamy sauce, add a lot of milk, add a lot of butter. Cool. So I just have some 2%. Just going to add in to get kind of a nice color change, not too much. Because it is going to, again, lower the temperature of our sauce, but that's what's just inevitable. And you can tell it's going to instantly change the color. I don't cook this. I put the milk in last just because otherwise it will cause issues when it's, it's reducing. But I really do think it's like interesting how when you make these like pan sauces, they look kind of like bad, but they always seem to just like bring it together in the end and feel a lot more put together than it is. It feels like when I'm making it at least. Cool. So I'm just going to kind of get out of this here and then we're going to add our sauce. One thing I actually kind of like this recipe for is you can spend so long making the sauce and you actually usually end up making more than you need, but it's a very nice like leftover item just for stuff. It's basically like, oh, maybe you have leftover chicken. Reheat that later. Maybe you have some other dish that you know, like you could use this as a starter with. It's just something kind of interesting. Okay. And we're just going to go and ladle this over our chicken. I'll put some on the side as well. trying to get these chunks. I actually really am a big fan of keeping some tomato chunks in there. You'll notice there's some large chunked sections just because like it makes the sauce more of part of the dish than just like literally a covering. But here we have our chicken. It's something where it really likes to cling to the chicken, but once you cut into it, there's so much bulk in the chicken that adding a lot of sauce is quite tasty. That's been our show. It's a dish that it's quite easy. Gives the, the sauce gives a little bit of an extra flair and you can really just make it a custom flavor that you are like particularly are looking for on any one night. So this is something where I can see myself, like now that I know how to do it, just kind of doing on the fly, like, oh, you know what? Might as well make a sauce alongside that. And that really just is what I like, like love about like cooking. It's just, hey, here's some information. Now you can just go and take it and run with it. And that's really like the heart behind the dish and the whole show as itself. So I'm Grant and this has been Second Plate.